Hi everyone, welcome along to the Ford Ranger New Zealand Rural Games. I'm Greg O'Connor and over the next hour we're going to bring you an action-packed program including many traditional events as this is the sixth running of the Ford Ranger New Zealand Rural Games. Shannon's going to be out and about doing a whole lot of the activities because this event is as much about participation as winning the prizes. Absolutely, I'm going to be exploring everything there is to offer here at the Rural Games and yeah, I'm going to be throwing a whole bunch of stuff, some cow pats and some gumboots, so See how that goes. OK, without further ado, let the games begin. The Highland Heavies are larger than life. They're big men who lift, push and throw big stuff. From hammers to boulders, tree trunks, even Ford Rangers. The heavier it is, the greater the challenge. This international event featuring kilted warriors from New Zealand, Australia and for the first time, Canada. The 18 and a half foot or 5.5 metre cable weighs 45 kilos and it comes from a Tanikaha tree from Northland. Regular competitor Ash Burton's Craig Manson was onto it quickly. How it's judged is like telling the time and relating it to the little hand on the clock. 11 o'clock for Craig. Ruben de Jong's competed at all six rural games and normally sports a full red beard. But this year, it's no doubt trying to cut down that wind drag effect. Clean shaven, and as to the verdict? So Ruben gets a uh, two o'clock. Not a bad effort from big Ruben de Jong. The man to beat, experienced Aussie Luke Reynolds, knew his throw had to count. He needed the perfect 12 o'clock throw. Let's make some noise, come on. Come on, Luke. Plenty of effort in, he gets it to flip. Perfect 12, Luke takes the win. On to the second challenge for the Highland Heavies, the weight for distance. Like a hammer throw, you project a 28 pound or 13 kilo weight as far as you can. New entrant, Kiwi Adam Miller. 1843. That is a huge personal best for Adam. The local hero is Callum McConaughey from Roslyn and Palmerston North, and he makes a great fist of it, throwing it well out. Strong effort. That was 1629. South Islander Craig Manson proves technique is king. He's one of the smaller competitors, but he throws the weight nearly as far as Tom Walsh can throw a shot put. Enormous throw from Craig Manson. And Craig delivers the winning throw of the day at 20.08 metres around 66 feet. Three, two, one, go! The Ford Ranger medley is a simple sprint race where the heavies load two 60 kilogram tyres onto the back of the Ranger and then push the mighty Ford 20 metres. He loads the tyres onto the Ford Ranger with the real estate agents on board. This is going to be a bit close. Make some noise, Manawa, too. We're not too sure who's going to take this one to come towards the finish line. It's neck and neck. You would just about have to call that a dead heat. The fastest time is the winner, and the Kiwi, Adam Miller, won it in 19.6 seconds. The Wait for Height Challenge sees the heavies throw a 25-kilogram ball of steel back over their shoulders and over a bar set at ever-increasing heights. Up it goes, he's over. Oh, he's happy with that. Aucklander Ruben de Jong, the veteran competitor, found that 13-foot height just too much. Under the bar again. Local probation officer Adam Miller proved to be a natural. Incredibly impressive. A novice to these events, but uh, goodness me. Former champion Australian Luke Reynolds backed himself, making it look easy and clinching the top throw. The unspun stone throw is exactly as it sounds, throwing a large pebble as far as possible. That pebble weighing 80 kilograms. It seems the aim is to get the rock as high as possible, as Tauranga's Andrew Wayne shows, and then you let it rip. Title contender Adam Miller had been consistently in the top three, casually throwing it out 2.86 metres. But Luke Reynolds showed his class by stepping up and comfortably throwing the 80 kilogram stone much further than anyone. Three metres and 30 centimetres for Big Luke. That is enormous. Three, two, one, go! And sticking with heavy boulders, the last challenge is quite possibly the toughest discipline for the Highland Heavies. 
Just like the final event in a decathlon, the competitors are drained and the Stones draws on every last ounce of strength and fitness to lift five progressively heavier river stones off the ground and onto a barrel. The lightest stone, 94 kilograms, the heaviest, a back-breaking 158 kegs. You need to get behind the big Aussie. Come on. He's trying to get the, the balance, get the centre right. Up it comes. Surrenders. The stone wins again. Great effort. Luke Reynolds from Australia. Final competitor. A good time would secure overall victory for first-timer Adam Miller. One down. He's moving through pretty nicely, but he's going to come to a, a stone wall shortly. How will he deal with that? Number three goes down. 134 kilos dealt with. 144. Oh, he gets that up quite nicely. Right, he comes to the last. Only three men have lifted this rock. Up he comes, come on. No, can't get his hands under it. Fantastic effort, Adam Miller. Adam also beaten by that big boulder. But being fastest to that point gave him the title. So Adam Miller takes out his first Professionals Highlander Championship ahead of Australian strongman Luke Reynolds with Kiwi Craig Manson in third. All right, the Professionals Highland Heavy winner is Adam Miller. Congratulations, Adam. You must be delighted. Oh, yeah, I'm really happy. You know, I didn't really expect to come out with a win, but I was just consistent over all the events and managed to pull it out. You're a local boy. What does that mean to you to be able to take out the local title? Uh, it means a lot to me. I grew up around here. I've lived here pretty much all my life. Um, just being able to come to this competition and have the crown around me was amazing. All right, congratulations to you. Oh, thank you very much. Kai Happy's famous for its gumboot day, which was the dress rehearsal for the Scatter Up New Zealand Gumboot Throwing Championship at the Ford Ranger New Zealand Rural Games. So the standard of throwing the size 5 red band was high and into a headwind to boot. In the women, Ty Happy's Del Adams gave it a heave out to 29.5 metres. Fellow Thai Happy native and three-time winner, current national champion, Kristen Churchwood is familiar with the pressure of top competition. Third and final gumbo. Make some noise, Manawatu. Come on, let's get her there. There we go, that's a good gumbo. And her throw of 32.9 metres, enough for her fourth New Zealand title. Tell us about how this competition played out for you today, because there was a wee head breeze, which meant you couldn't quite get to your record best. Yeah, there was a bit of a breeze. Um, yeah, hopefully next year, I suppose, try again to try and get that record. <laughs> Ty Happy's Jack Morell was keen for a big throw after competing in his hometown's gumboot day two weeks ago. And that confidence was justified as he got it out to 36.81 metres. But he was up against current world champion Otago's Kieran Fowler, who showed he's a class above. He moves up, he winds up. The boot is gone. He pushed it out nearly 12 metres beyond Jack's throw. So it looks pretty impressive to me, that pretty imposing 48.29. Tell me about the competition this year, how tough was it? And there was a wee head breeze. Uh, yeah, there was a wee head breeze, which makes it a pain in the ass, for the lack of a better word. Um, but we did have... Um, the competition seems to be getting a lot stronger, actually. I mean, last year, I think you could probably throw about 30 to make it into the final, and this year, you had to be well over 40. Kieran Fowler takes his third national title that throw 48.29 metres, 12 metres ahead of Ty Happy's Jack Morrell. In the women's comp, Kristen Churchwood throws 32.9 metres, taking her fourth national title. We're down here at the Ford Ranger haystacking. The time to beat is 16.77 seconds. I'm going to try and beat it. What the judges don't know, I've got a couple of Highland heavies to help me out. Come on, guys. <laughs> After the break, the Kiwis are kings in wood chopping, the Aussies haven't won in four years. The Anzacs are next on the Ford Ranger New Zealand Rural Games.
On the eve of the Games, two events helped kickstart the weekend's activities. First up, it was aspiring young farmers from secondary schools around the Lower North Island showcasing their skills at the inaugural All Flex Clash of the Colleges. The competition saw teams of four compete across various activities, both theory and practical. Event organiser Kane Nixon sees the initiative as essential for attracting young talent into the farming community. Yeah, so we've got 22 modules happening, um, all organised by the Massey Young Farmers Club. A range of different activities from tractor safety, body condition scoring sheep, setting up hand pieces, drench gun calibrations, just a whole range of different things. It's all about getting the country kids and the town kids together. So it's just, yeah, getting kids excited about agriculture and everything agriculture is about. Minister of Agriculture Damien O'Connor also enthusiastic about the merits of the Clash of the Colleges event. Really inspiring just to see so many young people who, who are interested in the skills uh, connected to farming and, and agribusiness. And, uh, you know, some really interesting tests here, but, but really engage kids and it's great. And getting to have their names appear first on the trophy, the lads from Masterton's Rathkeel College. Oh, it's pretty awesome, really. Um, probably didn't expect to win as well, I guess. It came as a bit of a surprise, but, you know, we did really well in all the modules, so we're overall pretty happy. And once school was out, it was off to the Awapuni Racing Centre as Rural Sporting Royalty gathered for the Norwood New Zealand Rural Sports Awards. The event recognises outstanding achievement in the rural sports community and over 400 were on hand to celebrate. 19-year-old New Zealand and Australasian junior harness driving champion Sarah O'Reilly claimed the Fonterra Young New Zealand Rural Sports Person of the Year. While the Levno Outstanding Contribution to the Rural Sports Industry Award was presented to Doug Lang. The Napier historian has been influential in documenting the sport of shearing for almost 60 years. Legendary harness racing champion Ricky May was acknowledged with the Toyota Lifetime Legacy Award for his illustrious 40-year career, including a record seven New Zealand trotting cups. Lady Pam Lahore was on hand to present the Sir Brian Lahore Memorial Award for the outstanding sportsperson from a rural background. Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic's Ali Wairinger accepting the award on behalf of world champion Silver Fern, Casey Kopua. Steph Tweed took out the Scatter Up Rural Sportswoman title, becoming the first woman in the 130-year history of New Zealand dog trialling to win the national title. Winning my New Zealand title was a sort of a dream come true, so events like this and awards like that just make it all the more special, really, yeah. And Geraldine's Ellen Oldfield won the Norwood New Zealand Rural Sportsman of the Year. The young shearer became the first Kiwi to win the World Blade Shearing Championships, beating competitors from 30 other countries to secure the title. Last year, um, certainly overseas, I won five out of five competitions, including the World Championships, so it was pretty big for me. It was a really proud moment to be wearing the silver fern up there on the stage. There is something to admire in the ability of our top axemen. The fleet of foot, agile men who wield their razor-sharp weapons. Wood chopping is a precise skill where you can't afford to make mistakes. The annual Trans-Tasman Clash is gaining real prestige with the Husqvarna Anzacs Wood Chopping Championship riveting competition. Eight axemen, five disciplines with one overall winner, beginning with the springboard. First up, Aussie Josh Adamson against Kiwi captain Shane Jordan. Stand your logs. One, two, three, and we go. All right, the chips are flying again. Now, Shane said four cuts, and you should be able to set your jigger board in. Shane's probably just, they go up together. He's an athletic man, this man from Queensland. And as I said, oh, he's only taken a couple. He doesn't need as big a chip out as what Shane does, and he wants to get away early. Yeah, listen to the music. How about you drown those sounds out? Make some noise. Come on, man or two. Yeah, come on, you're good for it, man or two. You're going to be on TV, you're going to make some noise next weekend. We'll see you on Channel 3. Let's go. Yeah. Through the eye of the tiger. He's looking to go. Josh. Boy, oh boy. Shane's taking a big scuff. Josh turns first. Here we go, here we go. Oh, Josh has got a bit of a stick going on there in the back. He's good. I told you he's good. 
Look at that. Keep your applause going for our Kiwi boy, though. Good stuff. How about them? First blood to the Aussie, so the pressure now on Kiwi Jack Jordan to pull one back in the stock saw. All right, Axman, hands on wood. Get set. All right, the team captain for New Zealand. Oh, Macintosh. Macintosh is off and burning, but it's an even Stephen. It's even Stephen. Shane Jordan, come on. Oh, he's good. He's good. Did he stay in there? Yes. He has experience, brought it home. The Australians were on a roll with the standing block, and young Kiwi Jack Jordan was back against the very experienced Aussie Cody Steers. And the Kiwis had to make a move. Here we go. Oh, the top of the block came out for Jack. Look at the Aussie. Man alive, the power these two young men have. Yeah, what a one front side of their backhand. Look out, here we go. Oh, Cody Steers, Jack Jordan. To Mickey. Oh! In the individual Anzacs title race, the New Zealanders were fighting back, entering the single saw. Kiwi Nathan McDonald against Aussie David McIntosh. X-Men, stand to your blocks. One, two, three. Off we go. Now Dave can get it done. Dave's a pretty handy saw. -er. The Australian might be able to turn the table, but the Kiwi, don't worry about Nathan. My name's Nathan and I'm a winner. Boy, oh boy. Aussies are having trouble with this uh, greener wood over here. How about Nathan? The final singles event is the underhand with our leading opponents, Cody and Jack, in a final battle. Andy logs. One, two, three. Yes, here we go, Jack Jordan. Cody stares, Cody's into the heartland. Oh, Cody's had a stick or two. Jack's the first to turn. Cody gets a good, strong finisher, though. The heart's burning. The lungs are heaving. The arms are swinging. Are the logs coming through? Yes. Kiwi captain Shane Jordan was gunning for his fifth singles title in a row, but victory was denied him by his little brother, Jack, taking his first title. So Shane settling for second, two points back to Aussie captain Cody Steers in third. Then it was the climax of the event, the team competition for the coveted Anzacs Trophy. Hands on wood, get set. Ah, oh, there you go, and away we go. One cut down, one cut down, then we go to the underhand. Here's Jack Jordan, Jared would go hard, Jack. His specialty event, but the Aussie's not gonna let it waste either. Jack Jordan, coat. Right, Jared, into it. Who's gonna win for this? Then watch out for the saw, the hand saw. It's away with Nathan first for the Kiwis with the hand saw. Here comes Cody Sears. Come on, you guys, make some noise. Dig deep for the Kiwis. Dig deep for the Kiwis. Shane Jordan. Eating timber like a beaver. Ho! Oh. Joshua Adamson chasing him down. Shane Jordan, Josh Adamson, Kiwi. So the Kiwis deny the Aussies yet again. Keep your applause going for the Australian. Come on now. And the Anzacs Trophy stays on the right side of the Tasman. Well, Jack, you've stolen the title off your brother, Shane. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. Um, it's always good to get a win like this in front of a top top uh, field like this, yeah. You've got the Anzac Championship again as a team, and that's five wins out of six years. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I've been coming for three years, I think. But, um, yeah, every, every year I think they've won it since, yeah. We're here at the New Zealand Gearing Up Championship, and let's watch how the pros do it. What's the hardest thing when you're gearing up a horse? Uh, probably if the gear's a bit slippery, but other than that, it's pretty much easy. I've got this beautiful.
beautiful horse Chevy here with me. She's a standard bred, and we're about to have a go at getting her set up for a race. Yeah. Um, it's quite a big animal, so I'm hoping it's going to stay still. I'm just about to clip the second clip on over here. All right, what's next? Yeah. And then you'll pick it up. Put, it, put your hand down. So you're going to do the back one. He's waiting for you. Side. Go high. Let it slide down. It's important about the steering wheel. <laughs> I don't think it's oh, no, in the mouth properly. No, no, there we go. There. There's a little bit more room. They say you're not supposed to make yeah, television yeah. with animals and children. Yeah. And we're doing both, but I think we're doing OK so far. It's been quite the experience, and we're all ready to go. If I had a little cart, we'd be off racing. Coming up, two rural sports get their time in the spotlight. Speed fencing and coal shoveling are next at the Ford Ranger New Zealand Rural Games. The Ford Ranger Rural Games is about skill and expertise, and for the spectators, it highlights how much knowledge you need to succeed. The Wiremark and Fencing Contractors NZ Speed Fencing Championship features the Top Guns battling from pillar to post, strainer to chamfer, and all against the clock. All right, you ready? Competitors ready, set, go! The three finalists feature World Power Fencing Champion Napier's Tony Bauskell, Gisborne Contract Fencer and Bulldozer Driver Hayden Walton, and Fielding Veteran Fencing Contractor with 40 years experience Mike Billinghurst. The upright post is the strainer and diagonal post is the stay. And just like a joiner, he chisels out a mortise to insert the diagonal post. The breast block is a half round dug 50 mils below ground level and it takes the pressure off the wires on the strainer post. The man to beat was world champion Tony Bauskell, who is gunning for his third straight victory at the Rural Games and already has a handy lead tying off his first wire. Meanwhile, things are getting complicated for Gisborne's Hayden Walton. He's losing time with his wire in a bit of a tangle. Tony Bauskell using his level to guarantee a straight post. Speed fencing, it's both physical and very technical, and straining off the wires to the required 150 kilograms pressure is a fine art. A post hole has to be drilled for the middle post. Out in front, the defending champ Tony Bauskell making good time and already stapling off his bottom wire before the others have dug their post holes. Returning the tools to base and a quick tidy up to earn those extra quality points and the defending champion Tony Bauskell is across the line first again. Tony Bauskell making it three in a row with the New Zealand Speed Fencing Championship, fastest across the line with quality workmanship to match. Gisborne's Hayden Walton second, and Manawatu's Mike Billinghurst in third. Three on the bounce, that's got to be truly satisfying. Ah, uh, yeah, it is, mate. It's quite a good achievement. <laughs> Biggest thing this year for you, you went up against Dad in the final. Hey, no, he must have slacked off a little bit. <laughs> hey. Today, Mike. Uh, we're raising awareness around Gumboot Friday. We're taking 16 tractors from Bluff to Caprianga, and we're just raising awareness about our fundraiser to get five million dollars for free kids counselling. Currently, kids in New Zealand can only get free counselling if they're diagnosed mentally unwell. But kids don't want to see counsellors when they're mentally unwell. They want to see counsellors to stay well. They're very proactive about their mental health. and So we're trying to facilitate that and give as many free sessions away as we can this year. The strength of coal shoveling is traditionally on the West Coast. But this year, the New Zealand Coal Shoveling Championship saw some fresh blood into the game. Young contenders ready to take up the challenge. And the challenge? To shovel 300 kilograms of coal into the bucket in the quickest time. In the team's event, the young Fielding High School boys managed to break the magic 20 seconds. Then the tie happy boot throwers stepped up, powering through 300 kilograms of coal and dust. Let's see how they go. 19 seconds. Ready, set, go! And 
So, a bit of a lesson for the schoolboys. In the singles, the banjo shovels were smoking. Dunedin's world gumboot throwing champion Kieran Fowler was first up. Look at the coal sliding into the banjo. Look at the coal going into the bucket. Oh, that one was a wasted space one. It went straight back onto the pile. Keep going. You're at 100 now, Kieran. Burn, burn, dig, dig. Come on, crowd, get behind him. Dig, dig. New Zealand champion at everything he does. 180 now, 92. Come on, Kieran, burn. 220, 30, 40, 50. Oh, that hurt. That hurt. So the pressure was on Ty Happy's 57 year old Curly Troon to beat the young fella. He's off. So, Curly, get in behind and pump the north. Come on, this guy's been a legend today. Nearly 60 years old. He won't tell me exactly, but Curly has been throwing boots for the last couple of days, and today on this cold pile, he has just slayed them. He slayed the army. He slayed Manawatu Hockey. The other, the other boot throwers, he's got them all. He's coming to the top of the pole. He's getting near the run. Come on, cheer for him. He's just about there. Come on, keep it going, Curly. Keep it going, mate. Another he's done. 29.87. So he didn't quite make it. Mind you, he'd had a big day. This is not the first time you've been on the podium, but you've won the quad, the double, and run second in the single. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know what must be my day today. I don't <laughs> know. But yeah, the cold, cold run, the cold run down the face well, and yeah, out of uh, just keeping yourself motivated and giving it that extra at the end. So former New Zealand decathlete Kieran Fowler winning the New Zealand Coal Shoveling Championships with Curly Troon second in the singles and winning in the peers and teams events. The Ford Ranger New Zealand Rural Games is where town meets country. The beauty of the event is that there's plenty to see and plenty to do. And over the weekend, more than 30,000 gathered in the heart of Palmerston North to experience a family-friendly carnival of rural activities and competitions. It's the annual event that the region looks forward to, and the Fonterra Have A Go sessions allow everyone to be part of the action, whether you're a kid or a kid at heart. Palmerston North turned on the sunshine and everyone came out to play. Coming up, the ultimate Kiwi battle of wills, dog versus sheep. Who will come out on top at the Ford Ranger New Zealand Rural Games? The Ford Ranger New Zealand Rural Games is a bridge between town and country. And in the heart of Palmerston North, the crowd loves to watch the battle of wills between a dog and six sheep. The Powerco Sheepdog Trials, heritage New Zealand rural sport, with the dog trialists from Whanganui and Hawke's Bay competing for the Sam Strawn Memorial Trophy. First out of the blocks, Hawke's Bay's Laurie Horsfall and his dog, Raid. Now he's just got to get these six lambs over the bridge. I'll just explain to you how this works and then we'll get some ex expert commentary from Pat Coogan. So over the bridge they go in the Powerco Sheepdog Trials. So look at that strong-eyed heading dog. Looking to yard those sheep. First member of the Hawke's Bay team, Laurie Horsfall. And it looks to me like it is job done. Whanganui's Jamie Shrubzel is next up with two heading dogs, Whip and Lash. He's just got to work out there. He's got to pull them back over and then do the split, get three going around. So he's missed his chance there. There's faults there, a few points coming off. Let's see what he can do now. Of course, Pat, it's easier. This is an easier discipline with two heading dogs than our fourth contestant will have with two hunterways. Absolutely, Jamie. Yeah, I mean, the, you notice the dogs are nice and quiet. Close, close in against the stock, and uh, the stock respond very well to these hitting dogs. They keep them pretty well settled, and he's gone through there, and now he's got to come around, and Jamie's standing in the right spot. 
But these six lambs might end up having the final say. So Whip and Lash, the two heading dogs. Here we are, trying to yard the sheep. Come on, in you go. Gotcha. Hawks Bay's Peter Williams is next up, and his dogs hunt away Frank and the heading dog, Star. So he doesn't have to split the six lambs this time, he just has to get them over the bridge. So the hunter is making the noise, the eye dog or the heading dog is heading them. You can see the heading dog out in front of the six lambs at the moment. So you can hear the hunter way there going full, full noise. But I'm just wondering, Pat, is it an advantage to go first or second? Surely these lambs, after they've been through eight times, they'll just know their way. Oh, well, they have a different set of lambs, mate. Yeah, it's all even Stevens once they finish this round. But we're just waiting on Peter, Peter Williams to yard these with the heading dog and the hunt away. Job done. Finally, representing Whanganui, history maker Steph Tweed with Grit and Flirt. Grit's the big hunt away, standing beside Steph there. The heading dogs are the more refined. Oh, there we go, there's the noise. There's the noise from Grit, Flirt. Keeping a watching brief at the front of the bridge there. Coming back, over they go. Look at the bark, look at the bark on Grit, Steph Tweed. Shepherd from North Canterbury, manoeuvred very well so far. She's over the bridge, she's into the Maltese cross. One heading dog, that is Flirt. One hunt away, that is Grit. And she has had a really good run pack. Yeah, that's pretty tidy, Jamie. And you, you notice, ladies and gentlemen, that, that dog, effective noise, but the sheep aren't running away scared of the noise. The, the, dog, the sheep like the dog, and there she is, in the pen, just like that. That's a really good run. How good was that? So, Whanganui does it again. A clean sweep in the individual placings, helping Team Whanganui claim the Sam Strawn Memorial Trophy. Steph, a couple of titles in two days, the Norwood Sportswoman of the Year and now the Ch uh, Sheepdog Trial. Yeah, no, it's been a great couple of days. Trip up here to um, compete, well, last night getting the award and then competing us, it's, yeah, pretty great, really. There's something about seeing a big tree and wanting to climb up it. For some, that is their career, their hobby and their sport. The Trans-Tasman Speed Tree Climbing Championship is a crowd magnet, and the Kiwis lost out to the Aussies last year, so had revenge on their minds. The first of two disciplines was the strategic work climb, matching speed with work-related arbor skills, and the climber's ability to move about a tree with just a rope and a harness. New Zealand champion Tiago Miranda shows us how. Getting the pulse already now. Contact on the second swing. Big jump here. Nice, Chachi. As he gets himself in position for the gumboot toss. Please. A little bit short. Here he goes for the second one. Going, going in. Good work, Tiago. Well done. Heading up to the limb walk. Getting ready here. Swinging through and landing. Now that bullseye. Beautiful. Oh, that's going to be quick. And Tiago did it in the quickest time of 1 minute 53 seconds. The footlock is the second discipline, a dash into the tree canopy. Effectively, it's a speed climb. The fastest wins. And first up, the man who just leapt around the tree in the work climb, Kiwi Tiago Miranda. Reaching for the bell now. Stop the time there. Next up, dreadlocked Kiwi Seb Bainbridge in an apparent world first wearing red band gumboots. And he's off. Come on, Bit of a short stride there, but he's got some good power going up, racing out. See the grimace on his face as he's driving through. Very physical activity, this. Good punching up the rope there, nice strides. The red band seems to be working for him well. And he's hit the bell there. Wow, I thought the red bands might have even helped him there, Jamie. So the pressure was on defending champion, Aussie captain, James Gigliotti. He's gone, there he goes. Good lock there, nice strides, good technique, bringing his knees nice and high. That's it, bro, 
standing up all the way up for a good uh, stretch of the whole body. Really jumping into the rope now. Sliding that prussic up as he goes. Up there, stretching for the bow and done. Pretty quick. Quick, all right. Quick enough to win the footlock for Australia in 14.3 seconds. But it was New Zealand who managed to claim back the glory, winning the Trans-Tasman Championship, finishing with a team's win, and Tiago Miranda taking the overall individual title. What about this rural games concept? It's really well supported by the locals, isn't it? Oh, totally, totally. Nice environment and nice weather as well. And then being here a few times, I'm pretty glad to be here again. Yeah, hopefully we have more in the future. Yeah, well, congratulations to you. No worries, thank you. <laughs> We've just watched the leader throw his gumboot 40 metres. I'm going to give it a go. I don't know I'm going to get it that far, but we'll see how it goes. activities available here at the Ford Range of Rural Games. It's these Fonterra blender bikes that I fancied myself the most at, but I've got a hot contestant here, Kyle, one of Palmerston North's finest, who's going to give me a run for my money. Let's make a smoothie. Ready? Go! Go, 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 go!
fight, more the size of the fight in the dog. Bryce and Louie, you're the winner of the Man and Mutt race, and you were in it last year, so I think you've taken some experience out of that. I sure have, you know, I had to slip the collar last year, so I made sure it was loose this year to slip it again. You made a raw, real flyer in this race too, that was probably the key, especially running around in the red bands. Yeah, something like that, like last year I had 11s, this year I got 10, so a bit, a bit tighter to the feet, which is good. The McFall Fuel New Zealand Speed Share features New Zealand's top men and women sharers, and the challenge is to see who can share the fastest. In a normal contest, you'd share 20 sheep, but in speed sharing, it's one. But we're talking fast. You have to clip your sheep in under 30 seconds to be in the hunt. And with the drought, the wool is dry and harder to shear. In the final, you share two sheep, and we join the women onto their second. The final between last year's runner-up, Woodville's Laura Bradley, and from the top of the South, Blenheim's Sarah Higgins. Oh, Laura Bradley into the undermine. Sarah Higgins just settling her lamb down. Laura, you're probably about 15 seconds ahead. Keep the job right. Keep the head right. Keep the sheep right. Up the networks, Higgins. Look at the mess of the wool, ladies and gentlemen. That's not like this in the sheds all the time, unless you work around Tickle because those shearers are so fast. But down the last side, Laura Bradley keeping the job right. Remember, these sheep will be judged out the back. Sarah Higgins turning to the last side. Laura Bradley, well, Leon, way to go, Laura. All right, there we go. Give those two ladies a big round of applause, please. In the men's heats, 10 of New Zealand's top shearers will whittle down to the fastest four for the semis. The first of the semi-finals had Tikuiti's veteran Digger Baum against up-and-comer with the famous DNA, 27-year-old Jack Fagan. Shearers, get set, go. Dig a bar. Oh, a little bit of a wriggler. See how these lambs have got numbers on their heads, ladies and gentlemen. These lambs have been specifically picked for the semi-final. Jack Fagan down the last side he works. Dig a bar, not too far behind. Jack Fagan out the last leg. This is where Jack's at his best. <laughs> Missed the cord. The second semi and pressure on for these two to beat those times. It was Golden Shears champion Roland Smith against Tomaranui's Marshall Guy. The fastest two times out of the four semi-finalists through to the final. Shearers get set, go. Into the undermine with both these Shearers. Marshall Guy, that's a heck of a nice undermine. Roland Smith a little wee bit behind, but Roland, he's not the best shower, shear in the world for nothing. Long blow time, Marshall Guy, 13 seconds. Marshall, keep it going, mate. Roland's coming at you. Down the last side, Roland Smith. Watch the Roland Smith. He will catch them all. 21. Well done, guys. A little bit niggly. So to the final, shearing two sheep. And it was Digger Balm versus Jack Fagan, son of legend Sir David, who faced off. They'd met in the semis. Both had gone close to the magic 20-second mark to win their places in the championship decider. Shearers, get set, go. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, make a bit of noise. It's the final. Up the net works the thing of Bob. Thing of Bob, he's giving it to this young fella. Long blow time for the Bob. Jack Fagan's right there. Last side coming up right. So speed sharing world champion Jack Fagan delighted to win his first New Zealand speed share championship. Yeah, absolutely over the moon. That was awesome to do this down in Palmy, and yeah, it was a lot of good fun up against my good mate Digger Balm. And I guess Dad will be pretty excited. Oh, he'll be over the moon. I think this has been one on the list for a few years, so it's real good to get the monkey off the back. So a fast finish for Jack Fagan saw him take the title in a winning time of 46.52 seconds. That's less than three seconds faster than Digger Baum with Marshall Guy in third place.
that's an excellent throw. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, look, this has been an amazing occasion. The Ford Range of New Zealand Rural Games. What have some of the highlights been for you? Well, I loved the sheepdog trials and watching Steph Tween, the Rural Sportswoman of the Year, was just awesome. Yeah, look, I love the Highland Heavies and the tree climbing. It's been an amazing occasion. You need to put it on your bucket list and we will see you in 12 months' time.